which one of the following numbered atoms is an sp2 hybridization state in the structure below in my organic chemistry videos I've always given a shortcut on how to determine the state okay so how do you determine the state just go at the carbon and count the number of connections count the first connection as s the next one as p p p and so on and so forth this is the last one you can go for just try to focus on the ones that are numbered uh, if you look at the first one there so that's s and p so it's sp hybridized the same applies to this one now it gets it gets a bit funny because it requires you again to open up your eyes how this is a skeletal structure so show the presence of hydrogens now the carbon on on one is connected to two carbons with single bonds so it implies there is need for it to have two hydrogens because it's a secondary carbon the same applies to the next one so you will see that the connections end up becoming what four so it will end up being sp3 so they are all sp3 hybridized the first and the second for the third we've got a double bond to the other carbon and then a single bond there so this one already has got three bonds so it just needs connection to one hydrogen So if we count the connections, one, two, and three. Remember, I said whether it's a double bond, a triple bond, count it once if it's connected to one other atom. So this is just sp2 hybridized. So that's it for <coughs> for this question. Carbon three is the one that is sp2 hybridized. So at the end of each topic on our platform, in any of the four courses, at the end of the, each topic, you should come across the quizzes. Okay. So I'll try to open uh, this quiz with 25 questions under chemical kinetics to just demonstrate to you how these quizzes are, are working. Okay. So the previous attempt had ended on question two. So there's a question. Let me try to go to the next one so that we see the new question. Okay. So for the reaction A plus 2B, what is the disappearance of A? So if you choose, uh, I'm just guessing. I haven't calculated anything okay save and next so you see that my my answer is wrong then the answer is this one okay then there's an explanation on how that is coming about all right so let's uh let's do a bit of some rules let's continue uh question nine which statement about a galvanic cell is not correct um, which one is not correct that's what we're trying to do so let's summarize each a reaction in a galvanic cell always runs in the direction that gives a positive cell potential. That's true. Okay. Galvanic cell is something that appears like this. So this is coming from electrochemistry. Check on our site. Or even on our YouTube channel, have, there's a video galvanic cell. So just search galvanic cell transcended institute and most of these answers are explained there. So reaction always runs in a direction which gives a positive cell potential. Reduction occurs at the cathode, that's true. So the cathode is usually written on the right, and then on, on, on the right, um, and then on the left we've got the anode. That's where all oxidation occurs. So these are true. Elemental metal is routinely routinely converted to metal cations at the cathode. No. So the first three are things that we are so sure of. And so D would be the answer for the incorrect statement. 10. The standard electrode potentials of magnesium and copper are given. Okay. Um, what is the standard cell potential? So, this is something that is very simple. Based on this statement from the previous question, a reaction in a always runs in a direction that gives a positive cell potential so our goal should always be to get the positive cell potential so obviously in this case we've got this value and that value okay so those are the reduction potentials of magnesium and copper respectively 
So this is something like this, magnesium 2 plus, um, plus 2 electrons is giving us magnesium solid and then negative 2.37. And then as well, copper can be written in the same manner. Also, 0.34. So these are all written in the reduction way. So we can reverse one. We can reverse this value. Okay. So that after addition to the other one, we should get a positive answer. So whatever you reverse becomes the anode. So in this case, we should reverse magnesium because we know that if we reverse it, it's the one that will give us a positive answer. If we don't reverse it, if we reverse the other one, we'll still get a negative answer. We don't want that. So we should reverse for magnesium. Okay. Of course, if you want to write, so when you reverse, you start with magnesium solid and then giving you magnesium 2 plus plus two electrons. This is an oxidation reaction because we're moving from an oxidation number of a zero to a two plus. So even the value will change the sign and become 2.37 volts. Now add that value plus 0 0.34 of the, the cathode of copper. So that would be seven plus four is 11, seven, 2.71 is our answer. Okay. So that's how we handle question 10. Question 11. At Transcended Study Hub, with over four years of working with students, our goal has always been to find ways to make studying easy for the students. So, so far on our platform, we have topics. All the topics in the four courses are already readily available. And... Uh, we also have the tutorial sheets or the worksheets, which are practice questions on each topic. Then we also have uh, the past papers, which are, are very good for people who want to see our questions come during an exam. Now, one of the best parts of our platform that helps learners, even as they learn or go through our content, uh, are quizzes. Okay? Okay. So when you're done watching videos about each topic, uh, this is a good start to assess your understanding thus far. And uh, of course, each time that you're stuck in any topic, it doesn't matter which university you're from, provided you're studying um, natural sciences in the first year, you may be a distance student, a full-time student, uh, all the topics are readily available for you. So you can always go back and revise at your own convenient time. And uh, this applies to the other courses as well. Okay, I thought I needed to mention that to you. And uh, this is a self-paced learning platform, implying that you can learn at any time of your convenience. Okay. So we've got the reaction that the electro is given as uh, R is equal to K and then H I2. So the part two. So already just by looking at the electro, you can tell that this is a second order reaction. Okay. So now the question is, what is the half life? What is the half life? 